Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City, their sports writer, is here as uh, I believe he is live at Citizens Bank Park for today's double disco, a little double dip between the Phils and the Marlins to start off the second half of the season. He'll give us a little insight on that. I think the Phils just changed their lineup, actually. Nick Maton was originally in the lineup, and it looks like uh, Ronald Torres will now play third base. That's because Alec Bohm is out, so this is the uh, um, cause and effect of, I guess, Bohm is uh, on the COVID list, Mike, and I guess he will not. He is not ready to go, so it's going to be Torres at third. Did you see this change to the lineup? Yeah, I did. Uh, what happened was Nick Maytom was originally supposed to play third base. I think he injured a finger or something and tried to take batting practice and couldn't make a go of it. So they um, they uh, reinserted or put Torres in to replace him in the first game of this doubleheader. As you said, Alec Bohm is still on the COVID list, but according to Joe Girardi, he is feeling fine. Bailey Falter, the reliever, is off the COVID list. Connor Brogdon, the reliever, is expected to come off the COVID list tomorrow. And Aaron Nola is still on the COVID list. However, he did uh, he was playing catch in the outfield. He was around pregame, and he is expected to to start Tuesday night in Yankee Stadium against the Yankees. Yeah, I was going to so say. that is the Phillies COVID update. Right yeah, now. I was going to say, uh, Nola not pitching in the first four games. We were all kind of waiting to see what Girardi would say. Uh, but him being announced as the starter on Tuesday, I guess, is a good sign that he is healthy and ready to go. Yeah, he's healthy. Uh, not more than an hour ago, I stood about a foot away from Aaron Nola, myself and a bunch of other reporters, and we talked to him uh, before the game today. Uh, so he's no ill effects. He was just a close contact to Bohm. He said he wasn't even around Bohm that much. He wasn't worried. He said it was obviously frustrating not being able to pitch last Sunday in, in Boston, and then he kept in shape by throwing against the fence at a field close to his home. Uh, and, but he said he's ready to go, and he will pitch Tuesday night uh, in New York against the Yankees. All right. Uh, what are your thoughts on Wheeler not pitching until Sunday in this series? Well, again, Joe already was asked uh, pregame how he set up the rotation, and he said he was trying to optimize rest for guys. So obviously Nola being on the COVID list had something to do with that, and Wheeler – Pitching in the All-Star game had something to also do with it. I guess when Girardi thought about the rotation, even though Wheeler only pitched one batter uh, in the All-Star game, uh, Girardi wanted to give him some extra rest. Uh, Girardi did say that he was not unhappy, that uh, he was happy that that Wheeler got to pitch in the All-Star game because he earned the right to be there. He, however, was not unhappy that Wheeler, who has thrown 114 innings, is on pace for a career-high 228 innings only pitched uh, to one batter in the All-Star game. So maximizing wheel and giving him enough time to rest was the theory on pitching him on Sunday. Okay, yeah, he threw three pitches in that game the other night. And you're, right. You're wondering, though, uh, Mike, this is a doubleheader today. It's only a seven-inning game. You could potentially have gotten a seven-inning type of game from Wheeler and not have to use your bullpen. Like, was that under consideration or was that not brought up? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's the travel, too, right? I mean, he's out to Denver on Sunday, he pitches Tuesday night. You know, he either leaves late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, comes back to the East Coast here. So I think the travel was something that they were looking at, too. I do think they have an issue going forward. They've got Matt Moore uh, starting game one of the doubleheader today. They've got Vince Velasquez scheduled to pitch on Saturday. Neither of those two guys has shown the ability to, to consistently go deep in games. So ideally, at some point, I think you would want to break those guys up, not pitch them on back-to-back days so you can save your bullpen. However, what happened to Nola and Wheeler in the All-Star game did not afford them the opportunity to do that at this moment. All right, Mike McGarry, Press of Atlantic City. His must-win column appears Fridays in the Press of Atlantic City. Make sure you check that out. And uh, I want to flip gears now over to, uh, obviously, Simmons. His name is coming up everywhere uh, there is a wonky little, I don't know, flimsy report out there that suggests Dame Lillard, he is going to speak. Uh, we don't know if he's going to list teams or anything to that matter, but it appears that Dame Lillard's going to want to be traded here. If you're the 76ers, are you making that call and giving anything up to get him, or is there within reason to get Dame Lillard? Uh, I am 100% in favor of whatever it takes to get Dame Lillard here. I'm throwing Simmons in. I'm throwing Maxi in. I'm throwing Paul in. I'm throwing in as many first-round draft picks and as many pick swaps 
as you want. I think Lillard is the perfect fit here. What he can do, his ability to score on the perimeter and create for others is exactly what the Sixers need to complement Joel Embiid. And I believe Lillard has three or four years on his contract left. You bring him here, and you're basically, uh, with a 27, 28-year-old Joel Embiid, you're basically setting up you know, a three-year window for you to go take a serious run at an NBA title. So I, if I'm the Sixers, I'm doing whatever it takes to get uh, Dame Lillard here. And I'm not making the same mistake I've made, or maybe I've made in the past, where I didn't want to give up a Danny Green to get a Kyle Lowry, and I didn't want to part with Maxi or Thibault to get a James Harden. I'm getting a superstar, and to me, Lillard is the guy who fits them perfectly. So I'm doing whatever it takes. By the way, Lillard, $43.7 million next year, $47 million the following year, and $50 million in his final year of the deal. So he would be the highest-paid player on the Sixers team, obviously. $50 million he is making in one season coming up in 22 and 23. Let me ask you this question about Lillard. I think he's fantastic. I agree with what you're saying. Him and Embiid would be awesome. But is there any concern that we're going gaga about a guy who has not been able to essentially get out of the first round of the playoffs multiple, eliminated five times in eight years? Do we look at him and say, what a great player, but why do his teams come up short? Well, I think on the flip side of that, he has made some deep runs on occasion. I think like two years ago, they went, they to, the went, East, to, they went to the finals. Right, against the Nuggets. So he has shown the ability – I think you look at the Portland roster and, and you could say on the flip side, uh, you know, maybe Lillard got them to a spot where they shouldn't have gotten. Maybe Lillard got them into the playoffs when they shouldn't have been into the playoffs. I think to that answer, you know, you have Lillard, a guy who has been to the finals once, been eliminated in the first round, as you said, five times, but you've got Embiid, a guy who hasn't gotten out of the second round. Maybe you put them together. Hey, that's what they need together. We talk about Embiid, uh, you know, being complimented by Lillard because he's never had a player like Lillard. Well, has Lillard ever had a player like Embiid to get him going? So I think they're perfect for each other. They can both help each other, and I think they're exactly what they need uh, for the Sixers to make it to make a run. And plus, I think it, it, you get Lillard, you make Joel Embiid happy. This is this is the elephant in the room, right? In today's NBA world, NBA stars, can't, Lillard's doing it now. Uh, he's got four years left on his contract, yet it looks like he's going to force his way out of Portland. Mm-hmm. Who's to say Embiid doesn't decide in a couple of years, boy, this Sixers situation isn't working out. I want out. You go to Joel Embiid this offseason and say, we're serious about winning a title. The player we brought in to help you win a title is Dame Lillard. I think everybody's happy. Fair. Uh, a lot of what you said I agree with. Uh, obviously, there's some things here. You're playing Dame Lillard, six foot two in the backcourt with Seth Curry. Uh, both not very good defensive players. Uh, uh, you know, you'd probably have to give up Ben Simmons and maybe Matisse Thybul. Defensively, no worries there? I don't have any worries there. Because to me, you get the two guys, right? And the NBA has shown this, right? You get your two stars. You get your Embiid and you get your Lillard. And then you get guys to, to fit around them. Who's to say you're not going to get a 3 and D guy who wants to come here because he sees this as an opportunity to win a title? Who says, you know, you can get a bigger guard, a defensive guard to come here and maybe shift Curry back to the bench. All other questions can kind of be worked out. The NBA has shown that. If you get superstars, players, role players will come to play with those guys. But you need the superstars first. So all those other side issues like you bring up there, to me, they can be worked out and they will be worked out. But what you don't have, what you do need first is the superstars. Get the superstars and everything else will fall in the line. All right, Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. I don't know that you read uh, or heard this comment the other day, but uh, Israel Gutierrez was on the Greg Cody podcast recently and said, quote, people don't like Ben Simmons in this league. He actually prefaced it by saying, I'm not breaking news here, but people don't like Ben Simmons in the league. His teammates don't like Ben. There's just something about him. He's an unlikable dude, and in the locker room, he's unlikable. You've been around the team a lot. Do you get that vibe that Ben Simmons is an unlikable guy? Yeah, I I don't know about that from a perspective of, you know, we are around the team a lot, but our access is limited, especially with COVID the past year and a half. It's been very limited. I I see where Ben Simmons, to me personally, don't know him at all, but he seems to have a little bit of a, 
you know, he's, he's a, a cool customer, right? He's, a, he's got a cool personality. He's not, to me, kind of outgoing and, and, and warm. It doesn't project that sort of image. But who knows what he's like behind closed doors. Uh, let me tell you this. I think his teammates would like him a lot more if he didn't go 25 for 73 from the foul <laughs> line and pass up open ducks in the fourth quarter. I, I think they would like him a lot more if he didn't do those things. And his style of play you know, sharing the ball and stuff like that is unselfish. So I think if he was on the right team, he would be a fun guy to play with. As I've said several times, I just don't think this is the right team for him. I don't think him and Embiid are are a good mix. And maybe there's a situation where, you know, there's an Embiid camp and a Simmons camp. Who knows? I don't, for whatever reason, it hasn't worked in Philadelphia. That doesn't mean it can't work somewhere else for Ben Simmons. All right. I want to ask you, Mike, you are obviously covering the Phillies a lot. There are, you know, some people out there, Adam Schefter said the other day that Philadelphia is the most equipped team to go get a guy like Deshaun Watson. What has the reaction been to Odubel Herrera? Like, has it been, like, was it a day? Was it an at-bat? Has it been a month? I, I can't get a vibe of how the fans have reacted to him because there was a lot of people who did not want to see him. But have they got a lot of backlash from playing Herrera essentially every day? They haven't gotten any backlash, really, from what I've seen from playing Herrera every day. I think his first at-bat, there was a smattering of booze when he came up. Since then, it's kind of been business as as normal, basically, for Adubal Herrera. But let's give Adubal Herrera credit for how he handled the situation, right? He came out, he apologized to several to his teammates. He held that press conference with the media where he apologized to the media when they called him up, he talked to the media again. He's expressed nothing but remorse for his, his actions. He seems to have gained the trust and, and uh, faith of his teammates who have given him a second chance. And so far, he's kind of, to the best of our knowledge, he, he's done what he's had to do and stayed on the right path. So the, the, when he first got played, there was a smattering of uh, booze when he came up. Since then, it's been business as usual. But I think so far... Uh, more importantly, Adubal Herrera has done what he's had to do to sort of rebuild his career and, I guess, regain the trust of his teammates and, and everybody else around. If Aaron Nola, uh, Aaron Nola, if uh, if uh, Deshaun Watson is available, if you're the Eagles, like Dame Lillard, do you have to do everything to get him? And if they got Deshaun Watson, what is the outlook for this season? Well, to me, you know, under the present circumstances, I don't think there's any way any professional football team can go acquire Deshaun Watson and have and have a good conscience. I don't think there's any way morally you can do that. Uh, you know, his situation, whatever it is, however it's going to play out, that situation has to be resolved before you go trade for him. If I'm the Eagles, under no circumstances whatsoever – do I uh, try to trade for Deshaun Watson right now? I, I, I just can't do it. Uh, Mike McGarry, Press of Atlantic City. The Phillies double disco today at Citizens Bank Park. He'll have more on that in the Press of Atlantic City. Follow him at AC Press McGarry. And enjoy your weekend, Michael. All right, Mike. See you down the road.